What's up Drop Services, Dylan Sigley here. Today we're getting into another Q&A and I run multiple drop servicing businesses driving six figures in an education business called the Drop Servicing Blueprint that teaches drop servicing. So today you're gonna get the real strategies and tactics working out there right now. Now, before we get into the video, make sure you like the video because if you watch it, of course it's gonna be great or dislike it if you think it's gonna be terrible and hit the big red juicy subscribe button, the notification bell as well. So when I release more drop servicing strategies, tactics, and tutorials, you'll get notified. And also as we go through the video, make sure you comment below with any questions at all that come up and I'll personally answer your questions in an upcoming video. So let's jump into it. Have you ever felt like building a real online business that drives consistent results, freedom, and control? Online business can feel uncertain, confusing, and overwhelming, but what if you had the vision, mindset, and actions to get from A to B and building your online business step by step so you can live a life of freedom, consistency and control. So before we jump into the bulk of the questions here, guys, let's just do a few shout outs for a few of the members of the course community. I mean, Jordan Trent got his first two sales and it's pretty awesome. Uh, Axel had a post 3.9K sale. That's awesome, man. You're killing it, posting all the time. So becoming more and more regular. And uh, Christian, $2,000 sale for his first sale. My first sale ever in business was like $850. So $2,000 for your first sale is pretty good. So massive shout out to the students in the drop servicing blue and loving the work you're doing out there. And also Jacob Lim here so far has made $1,000 in his first one month of income getting into everything. And it's also in the strategy he's using as well because he's kind of delivering the service himself first. And then he's building his drop servicing business around that knowledge that he's building by starting off as a freelancer. Absolutely awesome strategy. Already made his money back from the course so quickly. So super awesome strategy, Jacob. And uh, yeah, keep it up, mate. You're inspiring everyone. So the first question I want to get into here is from CRO Gaming Master. Hi, Dialin. I was wondering, was about receipts. Do WordPress gives the customers receipt automatically when they buy of the site or how does that work? So he's basically just wondering how payments work. Um, so with PayPal, once you've embedded all of the code into the site, your client's just gonna make a purchase on the website and they will get a notification email and so will you from PayPal. You can also uh, have the button basically after they've made a purchase, redirect them back to your website so you can track that conversion and it really helps with the targeting of your ads. So yeah, in short, uh, with the receipts, they get them automatically in their email sent to them after the purchase um, but you can also print receipts send to them manually or set up an automation in your CRM to do it for you so you have plenty of options there CRO Gaming Master and then we have Lorenz file here hi Dylan what about the invoices and the tax system if I want to do drop servicing, do I have to open a fiscal position from the beginning? Thanks. A fiscal position, I'm not really 100% sure what that means. Um, but yeah, uh, the tax system, of course you need to pay taxes. The only things that are certain in life are death and taxes, right? So you need to make sure you pay those taxes in your home country. Obviously, I'm not an international tax expert. I'm a drop servicer. I focus on marketing, getting sales, building and automating online businesses, not really international tax. So you're going to want to look into the tax in your country that's where you're going to pay taxes um, and in terms of uh, the invoices I mean you have multiple options with invoices you can create and send invoices from uh, PayPal uh, and you have tons of options out there for creating invoices but you can even just do them with a PDF that you design yourself to send through the client so you have a lot of options you can also have the button set up on the website where they can just purchase right off your website so really up to you there man there's a lot of options you can go with um, but yeah in terms of taxes I have no idea, I'm not an accountant. I pay taxes in New Zealand as a sole trader. Um, so it's pretty easy to get your business set up in New Zealand. You just start off as a sole trader and get going. Um, but I recommend, yeah, checking out the taxes in your own country. Um, then you'll, be, you'll get a better understanding for that. I'm definitely not a professional when it comes to taxes. And then the next question here is from Connor Byrne. Say you doing website design, would we connect the client straight to the freelancer or would I have to pass the info from one to the other? If you can please help, it would be very helpful. Well, hopefully if I help, it will be helpful, my friend Connor. Um, but yeah, basically what you wanna do 
is when you're getting started in your business, what I recommend is relaying the communication yourself between the client and the team. So you'll relay the communication, any information, any files between the two, and then you can automate that with a virtual assistant later down the line. Very easy to do. You build a working procedure, automate everything with people and software, and you're good to go. Um, and the main worry people have when connecting their freelancers with clients is they think the freelancer is going to steal the clients from them. And that's really not the case. It's very, very rare that that would happen. And it'll be a pretty bad freelancer to do that. Um, but just think about it this way, you know, it's the whole thing of the, the golden egg and the golden goose. Do you want the egg or do you want the goose that's laying those golden eggs? Obviously, you want to get as many eggs as possible, right? So it's just like with the freelancer, you're basically a golden goose for them. You're providing them with all of these clients. So if they try and steal one client from you, they're losing all the other clients that you're providing for them. So yeah, you're, you're doing a massive service to your freelancer. You're basically organizing a business together, right? Because what business owners do, they organize resources, whether it be human or capital, whatever it may be. And here we're organizing human resources together to create value for our clients. And it creates a lot of value for the team as well because you're providing them with clients. So don't be so worried about them uh, stealing your clients. Very, very rare. And what, what's, gonna, what's the worst that can happen? The freelancer steals the client. You've still got plenty of clients coming in, plenty of options for freelancers so you're good to go you just get rid of that freelancer and continue on to the next but that's never happened to me i've hired probably over 100 freelancers teams uh, freelancers and teams at this point and i've never came across that but i have heard about it uh, from other people so maybe it does happen uh, but i wouldn't worry about it and then we have a really good question here from delovan hi dylan how do you build credibility in a portfolio when just starting off well the thing is when you're beginning, obviously it's quite difficult because you don't have testimonials and examples, right? That's what you think. But the reality is it's really not that complicated. I mean, when I got started with my first drop servicing businesses all the way back in 2015, I had no testimonials, I had no examples, and I still got my first sales very quickly. And the reason for that is first of all, I just asked my freelancers to use some of their examples. I put them into a folder, a Google Drive folder, and I would just show that folder of different files to the client um, so they can get an idea for what we can provide and then in terms of testimonials all I had was a pretty simple uh, testimonial from one of my mates on my website and I only had one so there definitely wasn't any crazy advantage there it might be a little bit easier once you do have testimonials and examples obviously um, but it's definitely pretty easy even without them so I wouldn't worry so much about that I would focus more on seeing what you can get from your freelancers to use in order to help sell their services for them and they're usually pretty happy to provide those things to you if they're a good freelancer and then then we have a question from Skadron here. Skadron says, Dylan, I have a question. When it comes to closing yourself, and some of us, including me, haven't done a sales calls ever before, what are some things that you consider absolutely important that one must know about animation videos before getting onto those calls with our potential clients? Well, the answer to this question, I mean, what's the most important thing you need to know to do the sales call? At the end of the day, is gonna be the process, right? And the result from that process. So you wanna make sure before you get on the call, you understand the production process or delivery process, for whatever your service is. You wanna be able to talk them through all of those stages of the process. Number two, you wanna make sure that you understand the general results results they can expect. So what are the average results that usually come from that service? That's the next thing that's really important. And then you also just want to have a general idea um, for what's going to close the deal with them. The next question I have here is from Hastrit. Hastrit says, Dylan, great video. No one gives more useful content than you do. And every video is a virtual gold mine. Well, thanks for that Hastrit. Appreciate it, mate. Uh, great stuff. Great, great stuff. Just wondering how much did you yourself need to know about Facebook ads to correspond with customers leading up to the sale? So technically you're not the person fulfilling the service, your freelancer is, but you still need to know a certain degree about the subject matter in order to come across as a confident, knowledgeable to the potential customer, yes? Yeah, of course. I mean, the more you know about the service, it does help, right, at the end of the day, but you really only need to know the basic gist of it. As long as you know more than the client does, you're going to be fine, and you can learn as much as you can, right, before delivering the service to the client, and you should do as a drop service, you should try and understand the service as much as you can. So just do your research, talk to your freelancers as much as you can, and just realize that if something does come up that you don't have the answer to right away, you can simply say the same thing every time. Hey, okay, 
that. I'm not really sure about that answer there. Uh, I'm not really sure about the answer to that question there. Uh, but let me get back to my delivery team and I'll return back to you with the answer. So you can kind of just show the client that's a little bit above your expertise. You're just the sales and marketing person, um, but your production team is the experts there. So you're going to talk to them before getting back to the client. And the client totally understands that, right? Often you'll get on the call with the client and they'll just think that you're the salesperson of the company. That happens very often. So you don't need to worry so much about that. It's very normal in any agency for the salesperson not to be as knowledgeable as the team, right? So don't worry too much about that. But of course, try and understand as much as you can. Then I have a question here from Mahi. Mahi, hi, I am 17. I have created a website for drop service. What should my next step be? How do I promote my website on Instagram or Facebook without paying for ads? Yeah, so I mean, once you've built your offer, what you're gonna to wanna to do is put that offer out for free, right? So what I always recommend in the beginning is to use the free methods. And then once you get those first few sales, you can start reinvesting it into paid advertising methods to really scale things up. So with Instagram and Facebook, you can do outreach on those. What you usually do on Instagram is just do some research on Instagram, right? You can look around, find different accounts on Instagram, uh, check out the video on screen here uh, for my process and how to do that. Uh, and you can just find different accounts that look good and see them a DM, send them an email right there and you can sometimes call them as well. So you've got a lot of options there on Instagram, really easy to find accounts, go into Instagram shopping, etc. And you can find good stores to reach out to. Then when it comes to Facebook, usually what I like to do is research on LinkedIn because you can research different CEOs of companies and industries and get really targeted down to your audience on LinkedIn. And then you can find those people on Facebook to connect with and reach out to. And from and when you connect with someone on social media, they're seeing all of your social media posts as well as you reach out to him so it's kind of like a double whammy in terms of the channels and then we have another question here from Louis Gerard Rubuelta Rubuelta I'm still really bad at uh, pronouncing names sorry hi Dylan I just want to ask after the freelancer finished the task you gave them Will they give the finished project to you or will they send it to the client? Thank you for the content you're doing, man. Yeah, no worries, man. Doing a few there, Louis. And um, yeah, what you want to do, just like with the previous question, is you want to have a middle person between the client and the freelancer just so you can handle all of the communication and files in the best way. So when you're doing the final delivery to the client, you'll get your freelance team to send it to you or your project manager who will then send it to the client, right? When it comes to tangible things that you're actually sending a deliverable to the client, um, so not Facebook advertising, not Google advertising, but for example, video or a graphic or a web design, you want to make sure you have your watermark on that. You want to make sure you have control over the deliverable so that your client pays you in full. On a very rare occasion, maybe one to three percent of the time, if you don't have that watermark on there, the client can disappear. And that's happened to me a few times. Um, it's not really common, but it's just worth to have your logo on there before they've paid in full. That would be the only thing I would say beyond just, yeah, making sure you're the middle person between your freelancer and your client when it comes to delivering that final product so that's the video guys hopefully today you learned something you can actually implement in your business and once again subscribe notification bell like the video and comment below with anything you have I'll answer your questions in an upcoming video until next time